I guess I'd just like to make mention about Mary and John Paul and acknowledge uh, their work and the late John Paul and acknowledge their work on the farm. I was fortunate enough to go down to the farm and uh, it's an incredibly productive farm. I reckon it's in the top 10% productive farms in the region. And then I went, got taken down to look at the wetlands and I thought, wow, you know, our, our region's very short on water and this resource is a wonderful uh, asset to protect. So I'd like to acknowledge the leadership, I guess, and my talk today is going to be a bit about leadership. I'd like to acknowledge the leadership that uh, Mary and uh, John showed in uh, putting that place in, into the Trust for Nature Covenant. And so my talk today is about leadership, and I guess around community leadership. One of the things I'd like to do as an icebreaker, I'm going to give this a run. <coughs> uh, deer, deer are an interesting species, and I want to think about setting up the, the Darwin deer team as a football team, as an AFL football team, because I want to draw some analogies to football teams. Um, essentially, deer are close to the top of the food chain, so that really ticks off the eagles and the crows teams. Uh, <laughs> They rut, they wallow, and they urinate. And you know, feral cats do that pretty well. So I'd like to tick off the cats. Uh, tigers, we've had suggestions that Bengal tigers get brought into the country to add some, uh, to, to, to predate, predate deer. So I reckon that sits, hits the tigers uh, football team. They have no friends, so that really ticks off the magpies. Uh, uh, they're fleet of foot. If you ask the people of Harrodville, about the deer coming back down to the back of their houses and consuming their gladioli and camellias. I reckon that's awful. So I'll tick them off too. Now they have a drug of choice. Uh, grass it seems for farmers. They're wonderful predators of grass. They also have a, a fond enjoyment of the cherry, the cherry tree. So uh, sadly for my, uh, my boss Neil, I think he could tick off Essendon there. Uh, <laughs> A mature doe is an incredibly fecundant animal. She's never not pregnant. So I'm going to jump codes here. I'm going to go to the Sydney Rabbitohs, for those of you who follow a different league of football. Uh, and then we've got the great Springboks from South Africa. And yeah, that's a wonderful example, I think, probably of a close relative of a deer, jumping across. And I think, well, maybe, you know, there's hope there for the Darwin deer team. And I guess uh, this species is late late to the scene. So you have to kick off the uh, GWS there because they're very late to the scene as well. Um, so moving along, I would like to uh, acknowledge people who've done a lot of uh, work on social modelling and so forth. Uh, Alan Curtis from Charles Sturt University, uh, Neil Barr, who used to be with the Department of Environment and they had a different name there, and Bernard Salt, who's a well-regarded uh, national commentator on demographics and social change. And I think uh, one of the things I want to explore with you today is the social change that's occurred in our communities um, around the topic of deer. I guess what's very apparent to me, and I've been engaged by Neil and the senior management team at uh, the CMA, to look at the deer problem and try and assist the communi community, uh, identify the issues they have and have voiced their opinion. Because there's a steady mounting rage out there around the impacts deer have on both the natural environment, the productive environment, and I guess the social issues that it brings, and I'll mention them shortly. I just wanted to highlight the partners we have, and I've had, never had any trouble at all. This is one interesting topic. Everyone's been on board. I haven't had anyone say they don't want to be involved. I guess that's got to be a rarity. Usually there's an organisation, an individual out there who, uh, who disagrees. But this time, I think everyone on that, uh, those uh, logos there have been very happy to get involved. Uh, as you see there, there's been an incredible amount of media around deer, and this is a growing uh, thing you see out there, where uh, the media is picking up on the issues that have been experienced by the community. And I guess those sum up pretty much uh, where where people are at. Um, you know, whether it's the deer themselves or the hunters uh, creating trouble or farmers losing productivity uh, benefits out there. It's been a uh, it's 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 been and it's heating up. Let me say, I don't think you've seen the end of this yet. Uh, I guess one of the underpinning things is, and I was talking to Michael Boothby earlier about uh, carrying capacity of humans on the world, but you know the, the, the theme here is equally as uh, important to deer in the bush. They like to predate around the interface between private land and, pub and public land. In the higher rainfall areas, is that still working? Yep. In the higher rainfall areas, uh, up the ends of the valleys, and consequently, uh, what's happened? We've had, seemed to have had an uh, population explosion due to the fires that are encountered, the mega fires that are encountered in the uh, in the drought period that we uh, spoke about this morning. And so these fires for some reason have created a bigger food source and what's happened is we've seen incredible 
population explosion. And then consequently as a result of that, the carrying capacity of that space is, uh, is over. And so deer are spreading out across the catchment. And I think this is where we're seeing the, the heightened level of, uh, of concern by the community. And why we're seeing the problem in the park space is they're getting pushed up into these extreme uh, environments which probably don't have a lot of food or value, but it's a, it's a matter of necessity for them. So I guess the take home here is um, the population doubles every two years with no harvest. Uh, they double every three years with a 30% male only take. So this is the shooters out there just shooting stags. Uh, they double every five years with a 30% balanced female and male harvest. Uh, so, uh, even if we do control it, and I, I, my guess is there's 32,000 registered deer shooters out there present, and even, even if they, you know, they try and shoot one each, I don't know that they all go shooting, we're not going to be able to get on top of this problem. And I guess uh, if, if you looked at a population curve for rabbits or other introduced species, I'd say deer are well and truly on that track, uh, and, and your graph showed that really clearly, uh, Dan. Uh, the next slide, I'll just rush over that. This is a population slide, I think that's been shown. I think, uh, I'm not sure, uh, it's up to 2015, and that is all species. So Samba, Rusa, and Sika deer. Uh, doesn't have fellow by the looks. So you can see there the population's expanding uh, rather quickly. And uh, there seems to be a, a, quite an explosion from 09 to 15, particularly up in our, our part of the world. I guess this is where the social, uh, the social discussion comes in, and I think it's around the topic of tipping point. Uh, and I'd like to just describe it, a point in which a series of small changes or incidents becomes significant enough to cause a larger, more important change. So this is around, I guess, the community of having enough. There's been a number of small incidents out there, as I said, whether it's uh, deer eating people's uh, productive pastures, uh, poorly behaved, a very small percentage of the shooting population, uh, the absolute deer numbers, just the numbers of deer people are seeing. Uh, the public safety issue, as we heard earlier, uh, on roads and so forth, uh, I think everyone's really nervous someone's going to hit a deer and it won't be a great outcome. The behaviour of shooters, and this is, a, this is an equal weighting, interestingly enough, in the community conversations I've had, it, uh, the behaviour of shooters is equal to the issue of the deer. And might I say, it's only a small percentage of the shooters. And, I've got to give uh, the police credit here. They've been incredibly supportive and, and, and helpful in this debate in trying to, um, I guess, work with the community to provide, provide solutions. Uh, there were ways to resource. Presently, you can't sell the carcasses. So uh, presently, if farmers shoot them, they can use it for their own consumption or they've got to leave the carcass in the paddock. Uh, they, the environmental damage, I won't go into that. The legislation was covered off uh, by Ben pretty clearly. And I guess there's a dearth of uh, research, not a lot of research out there on the topic, and I guess that's something that Parks is really ramping up. And I had an inquiry from Charles State University during the week. Uh, they want to get involved, so that's a really good outcome. Uh, I guess I've been involved in a number of community meetings. I'd like to acknowledge Lynn Colston over there, who's really been driving the Kajua group up there, and has really, um, I guess, was at the forefront of this whole discussion. They got energised early in the piece, and. Um, Francesca Bauman has done a PhD a thesis on the problem up there and uh, Lynn's undertaken another task by creating a, a booklet for landholders and uh, are working with the police actively. So they're the meetings that have happened across the North East. This has all happened in the last five to six months, let me say. Uh, so if you, you look at the numbers of people inv involved, uh, a number of the, the meetings were invitation only because they just wanted to get a sense of what the discussion was. So uh, they've been right through the valleys. We've got one in the King Valley coming up. Um, and so they've mainly been facilitated and, and coordinated and owned, and I guess this is an interesting point, they've been owned by the community. And I'd just like to make that clear that it is really very much the community pushing that. We are ably assisting them, as is our role, uh, and they're to you know, empower and encourage the community. It's also a lot around leadership, and I don't think uh, you can invest enough in leadership of people because at the end of the day, the people are going to make a difference to what happens and occurs in these very ge various geographic areas. We've also been up to Omi and had a chat with them. They're not quite ready for the discussion, but um, we are ready to assist them. Uh, there's a Hume Regional Deer Forum, which is a higher level, and that's mainly government participants. I'd like to acknowledge Stefan here from Delft, who's been incredibly helpful. There's a really strong partnership. So they're all the partners who have been involved, and I won't go through them because I've run out of time. 
But essentially, I don't know anyone that hasn't stepped up to the table when they've been asked. So I'd like to acknowledge all our partners. Uh, the main topics for the discussion at that level are community priorities, legislation, education, market-based deer management, uh, police app to try and look at um, some sort of neighbourhood watch system where the community can collect data of these people who are causing trouble. Um, and so that's work to be done on. The police are really keen to support us look through that and Lynn's been working on that in the Upper Murray too, I might say. Uh, landholder education about their rights. A lot of time people are confronted and don't know their rights as a landholder. Uh, protecting the high value environmental assets. Um, deer hunting contributes 420 million to the state economy. So that can't be sneezed at. And I think there's an opportunity there that we need to uh, to look at and perhaps leverage off. Maybe there's some of that funds could be diverted into environmental uh, improvement. And again, the use of the carcasses. That's me, thank you very much. I, I would like to acknowledge land care groups, the ADA, the Victorian Government, Parks, Victorian Police and the Game Management Authority. Thank you.